thank you very much that you're taking time to talk with us. Um, we are happy uh, to be here with you. So it's my first time I'm doing uh, an interview in English. Uh, yeah. You're doing yes. fine so far. Yes. Um, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to be here. This is my first time at a Giga event, and I have been to a number of mega events and a lot of regular geocaching events. And being here in Germany and seeing the geocaching community as strong and as excited as it, as it is um, for, for me and for the people at Groundspeak to see mm -hmm. what it's become is incredible. And so when I get to be here and see people and talk to them, I'm more excited. I, I am as excited as they are to, to be here and, and be participating. So it's great. I'm, I'm happy to talk. Yes, um, and we are here in Mainz, in Germany, and um, 15 years of geocaching. Brian, um, at the beginning at geocaching, do you ever thought that um, this thing comes so big? So tomorrow here in Mainz we'll uh, meet up nearly 6,000 geocachers, and um, yeah, do you thought that it would be a, such a big thing, and what are your feelings about it? Well, I think that there's going to be more than 6,000 people. I think there might be 8,000 people. Okay. Um, possibly more, maybe a little bit less. It's a lot of people. And when we first started, our focus was doing it because we, it sounded like fun. Outdoor recreation combined with technology. It's funny that I'm wearing this shirt today because this is, um, this is a design that we did many years ago and we call it Tech Plus Nature. So it's the satellites plus nature equals geocaching. Okay. And it's really the primary reason that we decided to get started because Jeremy, Elias, and myself were interested in outdoor recreation. We like to play outside. And then technology, the gadgets and the, and the toys. And when it came to um, playing outside with a billion-dollar satellite mm. system, that was something that was very exciting. And cool. And, and cool, yeah. yes, of course. Um, But at the time, we had no idea that it was going to be millions of people. Even the concept of millions of people is, is really hard to imagine now. So we have over 10 million accounts on the website. And as geocachers know, an account is either an individual or a couple or yeah. a team or, or something like that. And so we really don't even know how many people it is. But when I think about the quantity of people... Um, even at, um, to, to think about those types of numbers when it comes to individuals, I, I think about it in terms of like a, uh, a football stadium. So going to, uh, going to watch, um, you know, Manchester or something yeah. like that, and you have thousands and thousands of people in the stadium. And then you say, well, 10 million people is many, many stadiums full of geocachers. And I think that for us, We're, we're just thankful. I mean, we're, we're excited to be a part of it. I think that we didn't deliberately set out to create a global community. We just set out to create a tool set that would allow people to have fun playing the game. Mm -hmm. And the, I think what we see today is a combination of a lot of things. But it's a combination of what we've done, which is the tool set, But I think more importantly, it's a combination of the tool set with the people mm -hmm. and the contributions of the people, the, the creativity of the people. Um, without people building fun geocaches to find, this wouldn't be what it is today. And so you have the cache hiders, you have the volunteers who are reviewing cache listings, you have translators who are making it so that people can understand the website in their own language. Okay. You have um, people in the forums who are answering questions. You have clubs and organizations who are contributing. And so we've done a part of it, um, but without the other parts of it, it wouldn't be the same. And so from our perspective, to see what this has become, it's just really exciting. I mean, we're, we're very pleased And we always say geocaching is a, is a product or a service that's actually really good for people. It gets people outside, you know, it gets people off of their couches, away from their televisions. 
so the more people that we can get involved, the more good as we do in the world as a community. And so that's a really positive thing. Um, I don't think we ever expected it to be what it is today, but we're very excited that it is. So it's much cooler when you were saying you're going out um, to do geocaching and then we go out for a walk, for example. Yes, and, and especially for kids. Especially for kids, right? If you if if we say to the kids, "Hey, let's go out into the woods and walk around," okay, maybe they want to go, maybe they want to play Xbox. But if you say, "Hey, we're going geocaching or we're going treasure hunting," which is what some people will will tell their children, mm -hmm. then oh, treasure hunting, let's go. And as we all know, getting kids outside uh, is really good for good for the children, just as it's good for the adults. Yes. Of course. And um, um, Germany is, is the second large in geocaching community after the, the United States. Uh, what do you think is, is uh, um, the reason for that and, and why Germany or how the German community, uh, community uh, changed in the last 15 years? I, th I think that from what I've seen, the, the German people that I have met are so passionate about the game. And a lot of it, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it comes from they're, they're enthusiastic about the outdoors. They, they can be competitive. Um, they are enthusiastic about um, if they find something that they like, they want, they want to do more of it. So there's people who do a, a tree climbing cache and then they want to do as many tree climbing caches as they can do or they host an event and then they want to host more events or they um, solve a puzzle cache and they want to solve more puzzle caches and I think that it's there's many similarities between Germany and other countries in the yeah. world um, but in some way the the German geocaching community has really adopted the game as their own and they've contributed to it, they've participated in it. Um, one of the things that, that we've said over the years is when we want to see how we want the world to play geocaching, we can look to Germany and see the excitement and the passion around the game. Um, I, I don't think that I could tell you with any degree of certainty what the core reason for that is, but it's, it's part of the... It, it's, part of who the German people are. So maybe I can ask you the question. Uh, and I would say, sind alle positiv bekloppt. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't understand what you just said. You can read it uh, underlined in the... Sounds the good. <laughs> yes. the, right, the, the <laughs> subtitles. Yeah, right. I, I think another aspect of it is that um, games is something that seems to be core to the German culture. Yes. Um, board games in particular, I think some of the, the world's greatest board games have come from Germany. And so when you combine games and a love for the outdoors and recreation, um, and then you, you bring something like Germany into that, uh, like, sorry, and you bring something like geocaching into that culture, then it has the power to, to really grow. Right. Um, and Brian, you are co-founder uh, co of, of uh, yeah, Geocaching and vice president of Groundspeaker. So right. what is your uh, um, everyday work looks like? In my job, I do a lot of different things. And I'm happy to say that because I think if I had to do the same thing every day, I might go a little crazy. Um, so one of the things that I do is I focus on the operational side of the business so I am an attorney by trade. I went to law school um, in 1992 to 1995. So that makes me older. Um, now I'm older. Um, so I went to law school and at Groundspeak, I managed, now I manage a lot of teams. In the earlier years, I did all of the legal work. So all of the contracts, all of the negotiations and things like that. Um, I also work with the community departments. So right now I manage a number of departments. I manage the finance department so that we have a, a director of finance and accounting and he really does all the day-to-day -day management of the team but we work together to make sure that they are supported, that they get their questions mm -hmm. answered. Um, 
and that they get what they need to make sure that, that we know what's going on financially for the company and that we can pay the lackeys and, and keep the operations going. Um, I manage the um, community volunteer support team. Yeah. So there's a team that basically supports the community volunteers around the world. And so um, there's a, a woman, her username is Frau Potter, and she's wonderful. And her and her team make sure that the volunteers have the tools that they need, that they get their questions answered and, and things like that. Um, there's a community management team, which is, which is run by a woman named Andrea Hofer, and they, um, they answer the emails, they create the FAQs on the website, they post to Pinterest and Facebook, and they do blog postings and things like that. And it's between the community volunteer support team and the community management team, mm -hmm. they're constantly engaging with the community and um, helping to share information, helping to receive information, and then take that information and share it around the company. And so I work with the managers of those teams as well to make sure that they're supported, um, to make sure that they have the tools that they need to really do that job as well mm -hmm. as could possibly be done. Um, there is a merchandise program, and in the early days I ran the merchandise program directly, and now we have people that run it, and so in the same fashion I will support them. Um, we have a, a legal team, and it's a very small legal team, um, so I will manage the legal team, and really it, it's not even managing the legal team. I work with okay. um, our, the other lawyer that is on staff, and she's wonderful and we do you know we work on contracts and and uh, human resources whenever there's issues we'll do those things um I'm trying to think what other departments there are operations there's um, facilities there's um, administration things like that and then jeremy on the other side is working with the teams the engineering team the information technology team and the, the creative and marketing okay. teams. And so that's kind of how we split up the roles. But day to day, a lot of what we're doing is meeting with people, answering questions, helping with communication. And then the other part of my job, and, and I say job, it's funny to say job because it never feels like a job. I mean, it's um, even coming here, people will say, oh, you have a business trip. And it's, well, yes, it's a business trip, but I'm going to an event. So like everybody else here, I'm here for fun. Like I'm here, I'm excited to be here. I'm, I get to talk to people uh, the whole time. So it doesn't, it's not work. Um, but anyway, the other part of my responsibilities, let's say, and, and even that I don't look at as a responsibility, but I have um, relationships with different geocachers and, mm -hmm. and business leaders in different countries all over the world. And part of what I do is maintain communication and, and speak with them. And when they reach out to me on, on Skype or over the phone or SMS or WhatsApp or whatever it is, it's helping to answer questions. It's helping to uh, solve issues. So, yes. so sometimes somebody will say, hey, something's not working on the website. And I know here are the teams to get it to. And, and many of those people in their own communities mm -hmm. are some of the, the thought leaders or the business leaders. And so they act as um, points where information gets consolidated from the community. And I do the same at Groundspeak. And so if we can talk, then it allows the communication to go back and forth and, and hopefully as efficiently as possible, which allows us as a company to support the community and um, and and work together to to yeah. give geocachers the best tools that they need. That that's what I do, and and right. the best part is is really I I get to work in the morning, and I I know what I expect to be doing, and I never do exactly what I expect to be doing. There is always something else, and I think the variety is something that makes it really cool. I like it a lot. So in the German uh, geocaching community is a much debated issue that the servers of geocaching.com are very laggy. So especially uh, on the weekends, is there something in the pipeline that this problem will be so solved soon? Um, we are working on it. And so what I can tell you is it's not the servers. Okay. Um, it, it's actually not at 
geocaching. Um, it is, it's the pipeline between the data. Um, and so there, um, we are working actively with the communications companies um, and the pipeline between the U.S. and, and I think it's, um, I think it is with uh, Deutsche Telekom that there is a, that there, have you heard this? Um, I work for Deutsche Telekom. You do, so please, but for, please but help for us, the, please help that's us. That's for the mobile part. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, so we have some contacts with, with geocachers in Germany who have contacts with Deutsche Telekom, and our information technology team is working with them. There, as the data is transferred through the network, there are some points between the U.S. and Germany where we're having an issue. Okay. And so this has been going on for some time now. It was very hard even to make contact. Um, now that we have some contact and there are some, um, some of the community volunteers are helping us, but we're trying to resolve that. There's um, a latency. Yeah. Um, and so it's not the actual systems. What's, what's interesting is that on the same weekends, if you are in Germany or, for example, maybe you're in Portugal or New Zealand, um, in Portugal and New Zealand, it's no problem. And so it's really very specific to Germany. Okay. Um, and, and in terms of a fix, I, you know... If there was something that we could do to fix it yesterday, we would fix it yesterday. And I think, you know, I can, I can make a distinction between the, the latency that we're seeing now, yeah. and I think two years ago, even maybe a year ago, we had some issues with the servers where on the weekends we just had a lot of traffic and the pocket queries would break and, and things like that. Over the past few years, we've made a lot of progress with the servers, and our, our engineering team is as strong as it's ever been. And I think that we've really solved many of those problems. Now, if geocaching doubles or triples in size, we probably have a lot more work to do. Mm -hmm. But it used to be the case that on weekends, sometimes the whole website would go down. And thankfully, that's not the case anymore. Oh, but, but in Germany, we have... Uh, we have latency issues, and I believe it's due to the traffic and the pipeline. Um, we hope to have that fixed as, as soon as possible, but we really need cooperation. I believe it's Deutsche Telekom, and I can, I can actually look into it and get you some more information, because if you have some contacts, even to put us in touch with the right people, anything that we can do to make it better, I mean, as, as I'm sure you understand, with, with so many people in Germany and, and Germany being such a strong community, the last thing that we want is to disappoint the German community. Of course. So you have many ways to play geocaching. Mm -hmm. huh? So the other ones are lo looking for traditionals, what we call Leitplanken Tradi. So it's a cache in a, on a highway or near a highway. Guardrail. Kind of, yes. Yep. Uh, that's boring. So, <laughs> um, so how should a geocache look like that you will say, hey, okay, this one, I will give a favorite point. Mm. I gave a favorite point yesterday, yesterday. to a geocache. And um, I, I was traveling with Amy, who is our events manager, and we were looking for geocaches to do. And she said, there's a geocache that has over 600 favorite points, okay. and it's seven kilometers away. Do you want to go? I said, 600 favorite points? Yes, I want to go see what is worthy of 600 favorite points. So we drove for a while and parked the car and we walked through the woods and um, there was, hopefully it's not a spoiler, um, I'm not going to say which cache it was, but there was a, a stone Okay. and uh, there was a little stone attached on the side and it, it was carved, it looked really nice, and when you lift the side stone and turn it, it opens a, a bottom thing that had the cache in it. And it was real. It was very well done. Um, somebody had clearly put a lot of effort into creating something that was delightful. And when we first we saw it, we said, oh, this must be the cache. And we turned it and, and popped it and saw the container. And, you know, we both said, yes, it, this is it. It, it. it was great. And so the moment when, when you truly feel delighted, by what you have found, 
Um, that's, for me, that's what, what is a favorite point. Um, and it can come in many forms. It can come with a, a very well done traditional cache mm -hmm. or a, a really cool multi or a puzzle that you solve. And I think that's part of the beauty of geocaching is that you have millions of people who are creative in different forms. And so there can be somebody who is a mathematician and they think about things in terms of math and so they create math puzzles. And there are other people who are uh, also very excited about solving the math puzzles. And so the tool set that's, that is geocaching is able to connect these two people in a way where they can share experiences with one another. And so whereas a, a really hard math puzzle, for me, maybe I can't solve it or maybe I solve it and, and I don't really like it, um, for other people, maybe it's the favorite thing that they get to do. And in that way, one of my favorite parts about geocaching is that it is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. It is um, for each different type of person, they can access the types of experiences that they want to play. Or they can create the types of experiences that they want other people to play who are either similar to them or maybe not similar and, and open people's eyes to a new way of playing. For me, that's one of the greatest parts about geocaching is the variety. And for some people, the guardrail caches, it's another number for them. And all they want is, I want to have the most numbers in my town, my city, my country, in the world. Yeah. Um, and so that, that guardrail might represent something special to them. Some people, we have the, the lamppost caches where you lift up the base and the cache is under. A lot of people say, no, no, I, I will never do those. I actually like them. I don't mind. I, th I think for me to be in a, in a place, maybe it's a parking lot for a, for a shopping center, um, the fact that geocaching can be in that place mm -hmm. makes it special. But... I like going out into the woods. I like um, geocaching when I can go with a lot of people. Um, I, I really like the variety of caches. And there are very few caches that I personally don't like. But I also appreciate that for some people, they don't like some, they really like others. And for other people, it's the exact opposite. Yes. And when we get a community of people, 10 million people or 15 or however many it is, it should be that way. Because if it was, if every cache had to be the way that, that you know, if every cache had to be um, brilliantly created, there wouldn't be that many caches because we don't necessarily have the capacity to do that. But the fact that maybe a family with children, they want to hide their first cache. And so it's it's an easy cache. It's a it's a it's a box next to a tree. Um, maybe some people like it. Maybe some people don't like it. Um, and I think that that's okay. It's actually it's part of the beauty of the game. For me, there's um, there's a lot of different kind of great caches, and I I have been really fortunate to get to find some wonderful caches all over the world. That's one of the best parts about um, being a, a lackey at, at, geocaching H, at geocaching headquarters is that we do get to travel and we get to go out and we get to, to meet with the community. Um, also for me, the best part of geocaching is really the people. I, of course, I, yes. I, I, I love to find the caches, but it's really about the connections that we make um, as a community and it's about... Um, I think so many geocachers can say that they have friends in different places in the world thanks to geocaching in their local community, in their country, and in other countries. And, and in a way, we are helping to bridge um, cultures through this game. And, and for me to get to, to do that from the office over Skype, to have conversations with people that I never would have had the chance to talk to if not for geocaching, but to get to talk to them and, and perhaps they come to Seattle and we get to meet with them or uh, maybe we go out into the community like, like this weekend and we get to travel and shake hands and, and go play with them. It's beautiful. That's true. As we arrived uh, an hour ago, 
in the hotel. Um, Mario, in the uh, in the breakfast room, we we met um, two, nee, four, four uh, lovely cashers. The one is from Hamburg. The other one comes from Eastern Germany. So uh, great people. And and it's also um, it's also wonderful that because you are a geocacher. If you meet another geocacher, maybe in Portugal, maybe in New Zealand, maybe in, in Finland, because you are a geocacher, you're already friends. You already have something to talk about. Yes. And it's wonderful. I mean, to be able to do that and have, have a connection with people that you, you don't even know, but you can be friends. And I think I've seen a number of cases where geocachers will travel to another country and they say maybe in the forums or on Facebook hey I'm, I'm coming to Sweden for the weekend uh, maybe somebody wants to go caching with me yes. and immediately people say yes we will go with you we're gonna have an event and the community will come out and greet you and so for for people to get to go and be welcomed by other people only because they're geocachers is is magnificent it's um it's something very special yes and and it's great for it's great for all of us to be part of it it's not it's not specific to working at groundspeak it's if you go if if any of the geocachers go anywhere go to to cape town south africa and tell them you're a geocacher and you have friends in cape town south africa yeah that's true yes uh so Last thing, yes, uh, Brian. Uh, so the stage is yours. Do you have uh, anything you want to say to the German geocacher community? There's a lot of things that I could say, and and I could probably talk for a long time. But I, what I would say is that um, one of the things that we always do at Groundspeak is we always, when, when we address a new topic or when we address a new issue or when we're having conversations with people, we always, we say that we assume the best intentions. And what that means is that sometimes when we communicate with one another, it's easy to lose sight of what we're trying to say. But if you start out by assuming that everybody means well and that everybody is interested in making the game better, It makes the communication more positive, and so starting from a positive is always a, is always a wonderful thing. And I think that it's, it becomes very effective in bridging communication gaps. For us, one of the things that we are focused on as a company is we want to give the global community the very best tools for creating, for sharing, and for playing. Mm -hmm experiences in in the world um, if you ask yourself what are they doing at at ground speak today um, the answer is always that we are trying to be better we are trying to be a better company mm -hmm. we are trying to serve the community in a in a better way um, and I'm very excited especially right now I feel like after 14 plus years of having a company and, and building a business within geocaching, Groundspeak is as strong as it has ever been. Um, we are as focused on geocaching as we have ever been, and we are actively developing the website and the mobile applications so that it will allow the community to create, share, and play these experiences in the world. And if you could come to headquarters, and everybody should come to headquarters if you can, please, <laughs> you're all invited. Um, if you come to headquarters, you will see 80 plus people who are really passionate about this game, and they are passionate about what we do and about building these tools and communicating and, and sharing and engaging the world of geocaching. And our goal is to take something that is already so wonderful and make it more wonderful and share it with more people. And so that's what we're focused on. And if, if people have ideas on how we can do a better job, share them. We, we want to hear from the community. We want to interact with the community. Um, we want to build 
a, a stronger global community and we want more people to experience the the joy and and the physical benefits and the the mental benefits of the game uh, worldwide perfect and uh, perfect ending <laughs> brian thank you so much my pleasure and hope to see you later on the uh, giga yes looking forward to it it's going to be a very fun weekend